cold open hot take time. Jacob Telejohn, how do you feel about the beach? Just in general, the beach where it's sandy? No, the Leonardo DiCaprio movie, The Beach. Oh, no. yes, no. The, the beach is going to the beach. Um, I've always enjoyed the beach, I would say. Uh, maybe more so now if I were to take like a metal detector and I could do some metal detecting. <laughs> so you, you could find yourself saying, let's go to the beach, beach. Let's go away. Personally, <laughs> I, Lucas Melby, uh, I fucking hate because you're the beach. white and pasty and you probably burn really badly well, what the fuck i guess you endorse or endorsing old man hobby of metal detector like that is, that is something to do at the beach but otherwise what the fuck do you do at the beach you you can go swimming you dick can go around in the water castles. for a little bit you lay underneath an umbrella with like a book you can collect shells in the I morning read a book inside my ds the light, it doesn't, you can't <laughs> see the screen very well. I mean, you make, you make a valid point there. Haven't gone to the beach that often because we live in Minnesota. There are I, there, I, There's tens of thousands of yeah. beaches, one might argue. I actually probably like Lake Superior, the beach there, more than the beaches I've been to we in California. We have the most coastline than any place in the world, Lucas. Uh, but when I've been to California, just like, yeah, maybe I'm at the wrong times of the year, but the beach is kind of like, or the, the ocean's kind of cold. Yeah, you know, sand. It's some people say it's coarse and rough and gets everywhere. I I hate everywhere, sand. but here it, things are soft. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. But one time I went with my parents to visit my now sister in law. Then she was just dating my brother, and she was in grad school. So we went to San Diego to visit her because she was doing or put, having her play. She's a playwright and had her graduate play put on. So we went to see that. And we just went and, like, hung out at the beach, just, like, kill some time. Yeah. And I'm usually, I mean, I get sunburned, but usually it's not that big a deal. So we went there, and maybe we were there longer than I thought we were going to be, but I didn't put sunscreen on. And I got burned yeah. worse than I ever have in my fucking life. That's, like, that's honestly, second, I think I maybe probably... some of my facial burns could have classified as, like, second degree burns. Because by the time we were going to, like, the San Diego Zoo on that trip, my nose had a blister <laughs> on it. I was rubbing aloe vera and looking like the main character in Buffalo I, I Dreams, mean, <laughs> if you remember that movie. I, I, I mean, I, I've gotten sunburned. I, I mean, never that bad. And I, I know Ricky's Ricky's had some pretty bad burns on you know, his back and stuff like that. And For the uninitiated, that is Jacob's father, <laughs> Ricky, who Ricky. I don't know if we've ever mentioned on the show before. The goat. Uh, Legend. But I also was wearing... I think it's classified as like a baseball tee, so it's like a t-shirt, but like the sleeves are a little bit longer. So it was a very bad shirt to wear of a certain length so that then I had a sunburn on my arm that then showed up when I wore any other t-shirt there. So not a great start to that trip. But then we None went to the beach sounds fun. on like our second to last day or something because it was Mother's Day. And it's like, my mom wants to go to the beach with the family. Okay. Yeah. And then we did this the thing that I was talking about. You just lay around, read a book, you dip into the ocean a little bit. I think my mom said... She actually got lifted up by a wave unexpectedly and, like, twisted her ankle. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> and honestly, you know, TMI, but speaking of another acronym, I'm pretty sure I got a UTI from going in the ocean on that trip. I, I, I don't know how that Because when we were walking works. away, I saw a sign I didn't see coming in that says, hey, don't go in the water because there's, like, organisms and shit in there. And, <laughs> you know... Not to divulge too much of my personal life, but there wasn't a whole lot going around at that time for me that would have given me a UTI otherwise. So I'm pretty sure <laughs> it was the ocean. So as Jesus. I said, fuck the beach. Welcome to a whole new pod, the podcast all about Disney Channel original movies. My We've already introduced God. ourselves, but one more time. I'm Lucas UTI Melby. And I'm Jacob uh, STD Free Telejohn. So far. <laughs> and why are we talking about the beach? It's because we're covering Teen Beach 2. 2, yeah. 2 2 uh, 2 with the number 2. So the numerical. sequel to Teen Beach movie that went the route of a Paul Blart mall cop maybe <laughs> where the sequel is just Paul Blart 2. So we lost the movie. It, or, yeah. So I appreciate it when a movie is up front to tell me like, "Hey, you're either about to watch a movie or you're not about to watch a movie." It should have been Teen Beach T O O. No. No. That would have made me never watch it. Wow. We would have skipped this. <laughs> so. 
Ironically, though, I feel like without skipping right to the end of our impressions, I like this more than the first Teen Beach movie. Yeah. From, and this is the one where they're saying it's not even a movie. <laughs> from what I can't remember. Yeah, I would I would have to agree that I I, I, I enjoyed the songs and the sets. And yeah, this is a Jacob, fun movie. Jacob has the excuse this time of uh, going through a post COVID brain fog. And that's, that's why he can't remember any anything anything ever <laughs> and I'm it's just, not related yeah. to just his normal state of not being able to remember <laughs> anything but luckily he has me who writes down notes and most of the time remembers things Thank for God. the movies we watch so Thank let's get right God. into teen beach 2 i really want to say movie all the time we open up getting reacquainted with well for me, it was reacquainted. For Jacob, it was maybe seeing the characters for the first, first time. First time, yeah. Of uh, Brady and Mac, who were mm, our... Mackenzie. ...main characters from the first movie. Yes. Who were from the real world and entered into the musical world of Wet Side Story to encounter some characters. Brady's we'll, favorite movie. We'll talk about there. Are you just on the, the Team Beach movie one? <laughs> well, no, because, because that's... It's irrelevant. It's relevant that it's his favorite movie because at the very end of the movie, it's wow. Not. Okay, Jacob, Jacob can only remember what we just watched because <laughs> he doesn't remember the whole rest of the movie <laughs> preceding that. Uh, Brady is leading Mackenzie, who is blindfolded, to a romantic beachside movie night where he oh. has a projector set up to play on like a bed sheet. Wet yeah, side it, was, story. it was quite spread out. This uh, bed sheet you were saying that it wouldn't work like that. It's not a uh, well. Realistic. Also, I'm not to spoil it. Uh, Wet Side Story, not a real movie, and also wasn't Sad. shot on film for it to be projected on an old timey projector. No. And confusingly, they start playing the movie, and we see a song that wasn't in the first movie, which we presumably saw most of what happened in Wet Side Story when Mac and Brady entered into the world. Yes, we lived through the movie in the first one. But this, this song is called Best Summer Ever. And we're seeing the bikers and the surfers, led by Leela, who is the biker girl, the kind of Juliet or Maria, and then Tanner, the surfer boy. Uh, See you later, boy. I can't remember. I mean, obviously Romeo, but I'm trying to remember <clears throat> the... West Side Story name of him, but he's oh. he's not the favorite character for anybody, really. But, noticeably, which makes sense, I thought, but there's aspects of the, the mechanics of how the movie world functions as its own world that are laid out in this movie that are very it's confusing. like the water, you mean like the water being poured on them, the constantly no, singing? No, oh. it's not. But I'm saying that Brady and... Mac are not in West Side or Wet Side Story yes. that they're seen, but we'll later see that the oh. impact of them being there is still affecting some people in the movie, but only maybe certain versions of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> get watched. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Jacob said the name "Best Summer Ever," a really great opening song number. Felt very much along with uh, like High School Musical 2, which I wasn't the craziest about that movie overall, but started off strong with a big group number. This movie actually has lots of group numbers. Yeah, like four, four or five. Yeah, I mean, most of their songs are with large... I would say the majority of the songs sung in this movie are with a majority of people rather than, you know, just solo songs or duos. There's a couple, though. Yes. And it's both... Seemingly this end of summer in the movie, but it's also the end of summer IRL for Brady yeah. and Mackenzie. So maybe this is actually the end of Wet Side Story. So that's why we hadn't seen it in the first movie, no. because they get out of the movie before the movie ends. And then the final number of Teen Beach Movie 1 is in the real world where real people are singing along with them, which doesn't make the most sense. But don't worry, there's plenty of that in this movie. Yes. Already, we're kind of questioning because the end of Teen Beach Movie after credits had the tease of all of the movie characters making it into the real world. Which doesn't happen. I, I guess I was under the impression that when we started this movie that that had already happened. But it it hasn't happened yet. No. It doesn't happen for actually quite a while into this movie. It's kind of a situation where I'm trying to think of a, a direct analog, but I'm not. I'm trying to think there there is something but basically it's like wishful thinking of like hey maybe we'll make a sequel here's a fun little bit and then it's like well that's the premise we'll go off of the sequel 
But yeah. that is not is what's directly happening. No, because I, I believe, like, even the two Wet Side Story stars were with all of the other Yeah, it was like a whole people. bunch of people. And, yeah, that's, uh, that's not exactly how it plays out in, in this one. Getting back to Brady and Mac. They're having some worries because, oh, we've only known each other during the summer. Yeah. Are we going to gel well, you know, during the, the school year? Which is like a very weird thing <laughs> to ask, but yeah. it turns out to be correct. And yeah, there's I guess there's a certain a aspect of maybe jam. like Greece to it where it's like, oh, these different social clique people met during the summertime. But when they get to school, you know preppy girl and greaser doesn't mix and mix, here no. it's kind of nerdy girl and uh surfer bro don't mix this whole time it hadn't really been apparent to us but mac was wearing layla's necklace uh layla and tanner again are the kind of primary characters from wet side story and she then they go surfing later that night and she's like oh i lost layla's necklace it's like oh well that would have been cool if like you showed that but then we just see Nothing we can do, and we see it drifting down into the water yeah, and like, sparkling magically. Like the necklace from Titanic. Very much so. The, and the Hope Diamond. I, I called it correctly that I'm like, well, that's probably going to be how they're able to cross over into the real world, and we'll get that. I mean, that's exactly Not immediately. It kind of no, takes a while. No, like, but... like it all. Everything just takes a while. Because this is a this is a it's longer, a longer movie, movie than the, the original. You said it was an hour and fifty minutes, about? forty-five or hour forty-five. Yeah, and it's interesting because we talk about sometimes where with the sequels you don't really need to establish the characters as much, and then sometimes the sequels are shorter than the originals because it's like, well, we'll just have them do stuff. We don't really need character development or growth or anything. No, there's quite a lot. Like, like there was one point where we're like, oh, it's got to be wrapping up, but I mean, there was still like a half an hour left. Mm-hmm. And we see some of the kind of classic conflict because already <clears throat> Team Beach Movie 1, or sequel conflict, because Team Beach Movie 1, Brady and Mac were kind of on the rocks and then they entered the movie world. And over the course of that, they got back together. Well, what do we do with the sequel? If the couple's already together again, eh, let's just do something to break them up. And yeah. that's what happens because they get to school. School is the conflict. In Brady this reconnects case. with his surfer bro, Devin, who is in Indonesia for the summer. And they're all like cha bra and bro sex. Yeah, a lot of like weird handshakes go on in this movie, you know, weird tubular. language. Yeah. Meanwhile, Mac has a friend, Alyssa, who's a super nerd. And she was gone at like science camp. So that's how they were having, able to have like their self-contained summer personas. But now... Their school personas are coming out and their cliques are clashing. Brady seems really dumb. Max seems overly serious and smart. There's this hunky guy named Spencer that Brady is not liking that he's talking to Max. And, and you'll recognize Spencer because he played... Um, I didn't. Well, you you might recognize Spencer from 13 Reasons Why. I can't remember exactly what I, 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 I told you. One of the reasons character. is he's Spencer and... That's one of the 13 reasons why you'd recognize him. Yes, exactly. Well, Spencer's kind movie. of an odd character because he's kind of supposed to be like, I think, kind of buff jock guy, but then he's more of like a nerd. But it's all very forced of being like, I got to be in study groups all the time. I can't hang out with you, Brady. Oh, I don't care about my future. I just want to surf. I don't feel connection to you, Mac. You know, they're high school seniors. Mac is very focused on her future, talking about colleges and shit like that. And Brady's like, I just want to design surfboards. But for some reason, I need to keep that a secret from Mac. Yeah. And I mean, he has some cool designs. Like uh, we see him later. I don't know. They're very silly. designs. Yeah. Like one goes into a um, suitcase or whatever. Like it like folds up. It's like really kind of bulky. One like runs not on waves but on like just kind of a, a weird motor yeah there's, there's, that's there's some, the most important yes one. that does come back and he's caught up in this moment working on his surfboard designs that he forgets that he had made plans with mac to go to like a college fair and it starts to rain and she had been stood up by him for 45 minutes and he finally gets there and here we here we see um ross butler the the guy that from 13 reasons why who plays zach dempsey i wanted to I wanted okay to well his name, name in this movie is spencer how spencer. about we use that rather than his actor name and his character in a different <laughs> property entirely people know him people know zach dempsey uh well his name is spencer steal your girl he's a tall asian with very goofy looking hair in this movie yes I question whether it was a wig or not. <laughs> it, it looks very silly. 
So yeah, he comes up, Spencer is talking to Mac, and the extra salt in the wound is that, oh, it's raining, Brady's all wet, and then Spencer's like, oh, here, take my umbrella, I don't want you to get wet, and Mac's just like, fuck you, Brady, you forgot about me, I don't even know what's going on in your world, and he's like, you don't got time for me anyway, so they've broken up. Yeah, they're they're pissed. I, I school think he, personas just are non-sympatico. He kind of breaks up with her because because they, they talk about the whole thing. Oh, maybe it just wasn't going to work during school. You know, maybe we'll all see you next summer. That'll be the next time you have free time, anyways. So we get a nice uh, breakup song sung by Brady in in interesting form because it's the He's most diegetic like guitar, I, the most diegetic He's music like m- number making the song. Yeah, I, I think it starts mm-hmm. out. He's on an acoustic guitar. But then he switches to an electric guitar in his room. And then a a mic set up. He has like a drum machine and he's like editing the track on his computer and then like singing into a mic. So it's like perfectly like, we know this is a musical, but he has a reason for singing in real life here. He's uploading it to his MySpace account. And this song is called On My Own. It has a great line of something along the lines of, as long as I have me, myself, and I, I'll be fine. And Irene. Very angsty stuff, and I thought this was a pretty good song. Yeah, no, I, I enjoyed this one as well. But remember, this is Teen Beach Movie, so let's cut to the beach movie with the teens. We're into Wet Side Story, where we're kind of, I think we may have already gotten a cut to, but I wasn't really sure the significance of what was happening. Very confusingly, Layla seems to not want to be playing along to the script of the movie yeah it, it happens right after they do like that fall right like where they fall off the stage he catches her and she's like i don't want to do this anymore yeah and it's weird because what is the world of wet side story is it a movie that they just happen to enter into is it its own like pixar like universe where the the toys or your emotions actually have personalities like it's a world unto itself but it has to just play out the script of the movie over and over and over again, that'd but the be, characters don't that'd necessarily be like a hell. They don't have the awareness of it being a movie, and it's very confusing. Her and Tanner are talking it out, and he's like, "What the hell is going on?" And they say that they miss Brady and Mac, so they're not currently in the movie world, but they still remember them being in the movie world. But it's not influencing fully what they're doing in the movie world, but sometimes it is. I like this movie more than the original, but yeah. all of this kind of world building mechanics of this stuff just, it doesn't make any sense. No, there's a lot of confusing. Uh, and I know, they, I think it's my understanding that people don't like this movie as much or like it a lot less than the uh, and, first and, movie. And I think it has to do with some of these plot mechanics. And I think some of it is, maybe it's hypocritical. Sometimes I like to nitpick these movies, sometimes I don't, but it's like yeah. when it's a Disney Channel musical. I'm more... How, how picky can you be? I'm more... I care more about the music numbers. And I feel like Fair. the music was... I think the music was more varied in this than the original. And I think it was just better choreography, songs I liked more. And that's why I'm like, well, I'm having fun with this other stuff. And maybe some of this other stuff is, you know, it's not working, but it's kind yeah. of silly in how it doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Anyways, they find the necklace on the beach, Layla and Tanner. And... Uh, we had a search. I'm like, what the fuck does my notes say? They're like, let's go search. That must mean Brady. Because Layla's like, oh, that's the necklace I gave to Max. So they're like, maybe they're in the water. So they walk into the sea and, and, and die. <laughs> yeah. And keep in mind that they uh they don't get wet. They're, they, they never get wet. Yes. And I don't know if it happens immediately, but very quickly we see that they have crossed over. Actually, no, it does happen immediately. Yeah. They cross over into the real world. They're, they're walking out of the ocean and they're not wet. And Jacob's it, like, why isn't their hair wet? I'm I, like, Jacob, I, I did forgot, you watch forgot, the first fucking forgot, movie? It, forgot it. So I appreciated that. I mean. The callback. The reference. It I was actually like plot relevant in yeah. the first movie, but it's a good attention to detail to bring that back as yeah, no, uh, them, was, was fun. for whatever reason, bringing over their movie powers, so to speak, into the real world. Immediately, they're kind of being overwhelmed with senses. This happens twice. They make a reference because three guys come out, surfers with wetsuits on, and they're like, those people are made of rubber. And the their friends who later come back from the movie world also make the same reference to some surfers. Those people are made of rubber. 
there's like a girl. It, it made quite the impact on Jacob. I remembered it because it was it was like a they both made the same. Comment. I don't remember I the was, second one. I thought it was funny. Um, some girls jumping on some trampoline. There's like a burger shack. Which, I mean, they should have had trampolines in 1962. <laughs> yeah, they probably did. I don't know. Uh, but then a guy like, like, hey, you lost. Here's my phone. Use it. And Tanner, his character in this, I don't think his character in the first movie was dumb and a little like maybe flamboyant. accidentally effeminate or flamboyant here. It's not necessarily I don't think he's supposed to be gay, but he as I, I explained to Jacob what a himbo was. So yeah. he's a, a hunky boy, but he's dumb, but he is endearingly stupid and he is extremely dumb in this yes sometimes i liked it sometimes i laughed other times i said annoyed along with the characters in the movie oh tanner <laughs> uh but here him and yeah uh layla just kind of freaking out he sees himself in the phone he went to the camera accidentally and he's like hey little me how'd you get in there and that's one of the ones i i didn't like as much oh you didn't like that one i didn't like that he, one. he does later see himself in a in like iPad. a mirror again. Or iPad, and iPad. he says, yeah. hello, medium-sized me. <laughs> That's funny. We like that. Uh, Brady and Mac, who are still broken up, but they are coincidentally at the beach at the same time. And coincidentally find uh, Layla and Tanner. And they're very excited to see them. And I didn't quite pick up on this at first, but they play down that they're from a movie. And they just explain, like, you're in the future. And that's why you don't know what's going on here. Which I thought was... An interesting uh, way to explain it to them. Yeah. And then they bust into song. Always singing. Always dancing. This was a Layla and Tanner number called Right Where I Want to Be. Yeah. It's them singing and dancing in the real world. And at this point, I don't think... Well, actually, no. They, they dance with a human statue. The silver, yeah. Someone yeah. Who, a street performer, a guy yes. who pretends to be a, a statue, but then also does the robot and Painted stuff. silver. You might see him on, like, Santa Monica Pier or something like that, or, like, in Las Vegas or, you know, New York you City. You might see him outside of your house. <laughs> you could. You might see him with a mouse. You might see him in a blouse. I really, I thought this one was very fun and goofy, and yeah, they, they do lots fun. of, like, silly, like, dance choreography as they're just, like, walking down the street, and people are kind of turning and looking at them. Yeah. They also he, get on some segues. And the Tanner human statue is sad to see them go, but then they come back he on the segways. He, he like, and, he's like doing like a goofy thing, and he like blows him like a kiss. And then he gives Tanner a high five. Yeah. So I, I was like, eh, I feel like the human statue they didn't use well enough. But he then more. I thought they did well. Because then it's like, oh, he's sad that they went. But yeah. then they're on segways. <laughs> Which I thought like, if they saw segways, they should just have a heart attack <laughs> and die. Crazy technology. Uh, Tanner does build himself a Segway later on at the end of the movie. Fun little callback reference. If anybody was worried that that wouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. It, it does. He, he brought it back to the 60s, man. If you don't know Jacob personally, which none of you do, sorry. If you feel like you are best <laughs> friends with us, that's called a parasocial relationship. Ouch. Uh, and I'm only into those if like I'm getting money. <laughs> oh, cash. Dollar bills. We make no money off of this, so you aren't friends with us. <laughs> oh. I won't I won't pretend. But Jacob, when I'm like driving him, you know, as a chauffeur driving Mrs. Daisy. Telejohn. <laughs> Mr. Daisy. Uh he when we listen to his song will have to say the lyric that is like, like three tense. lyrics ahead yes. just because he needs to be like, I know I this. I know this. And, and I also, want you to know I'm not that confident I know this. that I will remember to say this at that time. I won't. So here it's like, well, we are talking about something that's literally going to happen an hour from this point in the yes. movie that nobody possibly could care about him making a segue. That actually happens literally in the <laughs> Every... end credits. It's <laughs> technically not even in the movie. <laughs> I probably wouldn't even have mentioned it. Again, it's one fun. of the last things we saw and it's that's Something, it's something you know, that I recency saw bias. And Jacob enjoyed. is very fixated on. Yes, I need this. I need to tell you. I need to tell I need to somebody tell them that it's directed by Jeff Hornaday. Oh, yeah, I, there we go. I would have forgot his name was Hornaday. See? Uh, Thank you, Lucas, with the assist. Anyways, right where I want to be. Fun song. Yeah. Uh, Mac and Brady do notice well, something seems odd about them. A, we shouldn't let them sing too much because that's going to draw attention to them. But B. Their hair is dry because they're in yes. like a shower, a motion activated shower on the beach. Uh, that I thought was fun. Cool. So that's a, a concern for them is like, why do they still have movie powers? 
But then we also got to have a wardrobe montage where True. it's like, you guys are dressed too weird. But then they like put them in weirder looking clothes <laughs> I, that I feel I like draw. So the idea is like, oh, they, were they can't maybe more fit like... into the normal world. But it's like, no, their first outfits were fine. Well, isn't the issue they tried to change clothes and it immediately they like change back to like old clothes? I don't know. Maybe that they can magic modern clothes into being old clothes. Well, One time Layla dresses like Jackie Kennedy, which is like. Did yeah. she uh, transform clothes of yes. Mac, or does I, Mac yes. just have Jackie Kennedy? No, stuff? I think when she try, they try on clothes. It it goes to old school clothes until they have their conundrum. Yeah, that's that's probably right. Yeah, I won't I won't retroactively go back and be like, oh, I was wrong. So now we're gonna edit this part because <laughs> I can't let Jacob ever correct me. Uh, back in the movie world, chaos has started to ensue because everybody that's remaining are not the main characters, so they feel... The background characters, the extras. Well, I mean, some of them oh. are still main characters, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. Layla yes. and Tanner. Yeah. So they feel something is off. They feel like, we should be doing something, but I don't know what. Somebody should sing a song. So then we get... This is similar to High School Musical 2, where now that we do have the characters established, it's like, eh, let's just have some fun songs. Just, yeah. like, pair up some people. So here, the the fan favorite characters of Chi-Chi and Seacat. Yeah. <laughs> They get to have a song called uh, Falling for You, where they're trying to subconsciously yeah, yeah. insert somebody into the roles of Layla and Tanner, maybe, at uh, Big Mama's Surf Shack yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and this is kind of a, a fun sort of doo number. I can't remember some of the lyrics. I think there's one part where the background singer girls go like, meow, meow, meow. <laughs> yes, they're, they're, they're definitely meows for this song. Yeah, I, yeah they're, they are meows. And Chi Chi is the one who's the most kind of greaser jersey girl like hey and, and, you want a knuckle sandwich yeah she's she's fun and, and sea cat i don't remember from the first movie much but he, he has like he wears a fedora he's a black dude with like curls um he's he's like throwing the mic around and stuff a lot doing some like john travolta stuff yeah he's not as fun as cheech no what do you do when you have characters that are hard to hide well you got to take them to school with you and this is you know like you said this is after they've been warned you know like, like this isn't like your world where you can just sing and everybody's gonna join in people except think sometimes like at the yes. end of teen beach movie one <laughs> well i mean it happens actually multiple times in this movie where they start singing and like very soon to this there is a scene where they do that big montage on the beach where it's like it happens but it's all like in their head I don't, yeah, we'll get to that. I don't actually know what is happening. I think there. it's all imagination. That's probably the easiest explanation for it. So, yeah, they say, act normal, don't sing, just walk down the hallway like normal. Uh-oh, Tanner's too hot. So he's got it. He pops his collar and he's like finger gunning, slow-mo yeah. walking down the hall. Has like this whole crew following him behind and brady's like oh my god but then devin's like who's this bra and then him and tanner totally connect and brady's like oh fuck i don't like tanner first he's (laughs) like kind of stole my girl or tried to steal my girl in the first movie and now he's stealing my bra true bros before hoes the ultimate douche that's that's our model right lucas are you are do i consider you my bra (laughs) are we bros Bro fists. We're we're unlikely bros. Bros. Unlikely bros. And similarly, Alyssa and Layla kind of hit it off, but also Spencer seems to have the hots for Layla. There's a funny bit where they both introduce Tanner and Layla as their cousins from Finland or Iceland, which I, you know, it's something that I feel like comes up in like sitcoms where it's like, well, you could also just like, not have them come to school with you because it doesn't make sense that you'd have a cousin visit you from a different country and then they just start going to school with you. I'm like, I don't know. That's not really a thing that happens. Especially if you go to school in Hawaii and they come to visit, they probably just want to hang out in Hawaii with Johnny Tsunami and not hey, go to your Johnny. high school. They are saying like, hey, they're having too much fun here. They're seeing the good in our world and our world actually sucks. So we need to find True. something that's really going to test them and stress them out and that happens to be they go to the school's like courtyard cafeteria area during lunch and it's very mean girls where every single table is a different clique the nerds the jocks the the goths the band kids whatever and layla and only fans people uh, you know would literally be illegal (laughs) Uh, not for them to gather together 
for high schoolers to, I mean, I guess I don't know what they're putting on OnlyFans, yeah, but I like, feel like generally not that kind of content. Jesus. I think you have to probably be eighteen plus to have any kind Only of fans on OnlyFans. Only fans originally made just for art. No, but I'm still saying they probably have it set up. Oh, nowadays maybe yeah. To just have it be any. I don't know. I don't go on there. Yeah. Okay. Clearly, Jacob. Oh, it just was a random thing. Like, uh, I've like literally what if it like is like a, a joke? I've like, literally uh, never been uh, on OnlyFans. Like, what if we like kissed? Oh, I mean, we're just, <laughs> we're just kidding. <laughs> I've literally, literally, never been on. Wow. Uh, I'll let the jury decide. <laughs> I just randomly brought this up, and I was saying I've never been to this site at all. Well, I mean, everybody who's anybody knows what OnlyFans is. Now it's all of you that are the perverts <laughs> for knowing what it is. You're not sickos. You are the it's sickos. It's you for even knowing what yeah. it is. Get your mind out Brazil, of Brazil, you're sick. He was talking about a website that just has ceiling fans. It's for, you yeah. fucking <laughs> disgusting person. Uh, back to the, the ba- school back courtyard. The school. The, Layla the, and Tanner, they're just like, hey, these people, they just need some music. They need music and dance. So the song is... Uh, twist your frown upside down. Did you talk about the the one bully yet? I did, and there's an okay. amazing bully. He's an ass. Uh, Tanner's like, hey, how's it going? My name's Tan, or he doesn't say. He's like, hey, can I like hang out with you? And he's like, <laughs> fuck off, spray uh-huh. tan. And he's like, uh, actually, it's just Tanner. So remove the spray, add the nur. And he's like, oh. <laughs> and then Tanner's like, huh? Ugh. <laughs> and then he's just like he does like the thing of like pointing at your chest and then <laughs> flick hit, your nose he flicks his nose i'm like this character <laughs> is amazing <laughs> I, I i you, you got a kick out of him i mean it's the most over-the-top bully i think we've ever gotten in the decom and that's even including i think probably the other best one is in the other me the bully who ends up becoming friends with the kid because he's like my dad's dead or something oh, <laughs> whatever oh. but yeah the song twist your frown upside down and I was kind of taking notes, so I didn't immediately catch it because it's Layla and Tanner obviously singing. But then Mac and Brady are singing. Okay. But then also all the other kids at school are singing. Everybody and joins along. in. The bully joins in. Some really weird nerd boy joins in. You can just call him a nerd. You don't need to be like, he was the weirdest nerd. <laughs> He's the ever. weirdest nerd. This looked like a I white mean, Steve was. Urkel. Yeah. Uh, he gets, you know, maybe some Revenge of the Nerd style Hell stuff. Hell yeah. Uh, in that he just I'm ho- jealous. hooks up with a cheerleader, but not in a rapey way <laughs> like no, happens no, in Revenge no. of the Nerds. No, no. Uh, but this is another really fun group number. Obviously, setting-wise, similar to uh, Keep Up the Status Quo or whatever from High School Stick Musical. Stick with the Status but Quo. But this is oh, yeah, very much more like a, a positive song. Yes. Just being like, hey, Peru is happy. We don't get along. And there's some like very dramatic... Uh, shots of like one kid who doesn't want to smile and everybody else is smiling around him yeah. and then he finally cracks a smile and he's got braces and it's Aww. like oh that's why he didn't want to smile so this is uh it ends and the the bully makes up with like the nerd but then he's like never talk about this again yeah he then he lowers him into the garbage can or he puts the lid back on yeah, his head well smiles can't <laughs> solve everything no can't last forever returning back to the movie world we're seeing that and the characters are noticing it because I think we maybe seen one person before in the background disappear. Uh, sparkle, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. oddly poof, they like poof. sparkle and then turn black and white and then disappear. Turn to dust, yeah. But secondary characters are recognizing it and they're like, "Oh, those are the people that never talk and just like wave in the background, and now they're disappearing." So some weird or fun meta humor. Tanner and Brady, uh, they bond over both feeling worried about their girls. Yeah. It's like, what if they don't like me? Well, Mac doesn't like me currently. <laughs> and this is very strong himbo energy so, for Tanner here. Yeah, this is where they're back at um his Brady's surf like weird shack board laboratory. <laughs> where, yeah. He's showing Tanner all of his different designs and stuff like that of his surfboards. Tanner's looking in the iPad. He's showing at him all of his tech deck dudes. <laughs> And at one point, they go down his fireman's pole, and Tanner really struggles to uh, slide down. He's really yeah. They don't have fire poles in 1962. Uh, that's just almost just called him himbo. Uh, <laughs> Tanner, he's basically he's worried about Layla, kind of maybe rightfully because Layla starts to say, "I don't want to go back to the movie," or "I don't want." She doesn't know it's the movie yet. I don't want to go back to. Maybe she doesn't say here. She just comes out with like normal hair and she looks like a normal person. It's like, yeah. oh, oh, no, they're both their hairs can get wet. They're assimilating into our world. Yeah. 
this is where then they finally say like mac is just like oh by the way you're from a movie so like you're not a real person and then they freak out which yeah i mean would have to be an existential crisis but to prove it to them they show them the movie on their phone but layla and tanner are in the movie has layla thrown her necklace back yet or is that coming after this whole deal uh, or was that before? I think, I think that's coming up in a little okay. bit. I think I did make a note of that. All right. So then it's like, what are these cutbacks to the movie world that we're seeing? Yeah. Because the movie, so is this like the movie is its own thing? And then there is a pocket universe that fully reflects the plot of the movie in like a cycle <laughs> or oh. something. Doesn't make any sense at all. But the music's fun. It's fun. We're having fun. To try to convince Layla that, hey, being in a movie is cool, and you should go back to your movie world. So they start showing them actually clips from the movie. Like, they see themselves, and Tanner's like, hey, that's me. Yeah, I, 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 oh, I did say that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he makes a segue at the end, guys. On a segue. Segwaying into what I was talking about before Jacob repeated some of the stuff I was saying. They sing a song called Silver Screen. The best, best number. I don't know if it's the best song. Just the, yeah, the coolest one. Yeah, I don't think the music one. was necessarily my favorite song, but it's a very elaborate production where probably Jacob is right in saying this is happening in their heads or it's a reflection of what they're explaining to Layla and Tanner. So the way this plays out is, I mean, they sing their song, whatever, but the whole time it's it's like they're They have a full actors. movie crew. Yes. Setting up sets that they're dancing on. Multiple. There's like a singing in the rain one, a pirate's one. Cowboys. Cowboys, yeah, like a So saloon. they're changing costumes. Costumes are changing. Other actors yeah. around them. And, and it's more set up like a, almost like a like a play, like like the way that they're, they're opening Well, it's supposed to be like stuff. old-timey movies yeah. of like the 1960s, or probably before the 1960s. Yeah, and no, I, I, I thought that was, that was fun. Cool. I mean, this is another very large you know large extras you know a lot of extras you know a, a bigger performance. yeah the most elaborate one that's not just like look at all this like choreography we have this big group doing it as multiple sets and and costumes and, 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 and it, it, it is all taking place on the beach because i mean throughout the, this whole song you can see you know the sand on the ground and stuff like that there and might course, be some times where you can't see the sand oh, i don't know maybe maybe it's not all on the beach according to lucas but i'm they, not saying that they do roll out a red carpet not on the beach not giving this they do a lot of red carpet. Everybody's got all these fancy. So you know, then it's supposed to be like, oh, on. your fans would love you. Yeah, you made so the red carpet. So then it's like, well, you're saying it's fun to be an actor in the movie. Yeah. But she would be going back into like this Sisyphean hell where she just has yes. to live Wet Side Story over and over and over and over, and over, over again, over. which isn't really the same. So I don't blame Layla for not being convinced to go back to her movie prison. But this is where I had the idea that would be insane. But like, what if it was that they, to convince them or something, some plot contrivance where they meet the actors who had played them in Wet Side Story? It, it would be very silly, but I do like the idea. It'd be amazing. If they're like, hey, I was you when I was younger. And Tanner's like, hey, I'm you now. Me, me. Or and then the actor's goofy. just like, why are you like that? <laughs> are you like this all the time? I hated that role. You're you're so annoying. Oh, uh, that's that's in like the like the rated R version or like like a adult or one. I don't know, PG thirteen one. That's just mean. It's more it's mean spirited the the way you're describing it. Okay, you you saved yourself there. It wasn't rated like, R. This is not Teen Beach <laughs> this, two. Uh, if you know what that means. Oh, oh, I don't I don't even know what that means. I might have the title wrong, but I think there's a This is not Avatar. Oh. I'm oh. looking at the the camera that's oh, okay. not in front of me. Uh shout out to the Oscars. <laughs> As I said, Layla's not buying it and she no. to prove her point for whatever reason this throws is where her she necklace. throws the necklace into the ocean, yeah. And it's like, fuck off. I'm never returning to my world. But then that allows, because it washes up on shore in the movie world, and it allows all of the movie gang, you know, we got Butch, like, Sea Cat, oh, man, this necklace. Chi Chi, and Struts, her Rascal, brother, her brother Lugna. needs a little, yeah, they, they all have fun names, but her brother is like very skeptical about it, you know, he's got the fear of water. Her brother Butchie. It, it would be interesting if all of them just had the fear of water, just so they never entered it. So, so maybe this whole time. They well, could, that wouldn't they, work, though, because half of them are surfers. Yeah. It's sorry. not like. 
I understand what you're saying. Like, yeah. it, you know, that'd be very like YA novel of like built into our society. Never go into the water yeah. because you might go into the real world. Yeah. So I wonder if they could always have gone into the real world. Don't. <laughs> this movie doesn't have the answers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it doesn't even have the answers to the questions it's raising in <laughs> this movie. So they run into. Because Mac and Brady are like, well, we need to find the necklace. So they're just looking for the necklace in the ocean. And then they just run into the crew as they all come in. And they're perfectly dry. So that's completely opposite because this is how long it took for everybody to come into the movie. As compared to the end of the movie, the teaser they had was everybody coming out of the ocean. And they were all wet. So yes. they decided to keep similar ideas, but then be like, what if they were dry? Yeah, you know, dry, huh? I respect the the zigging when I thought they would be zagging. Yeah, like zebra. Uh, they're all everybody's excited to see everybody, and they're like, "All right, Layla, you got to come home with us." And she's like, "No, I like it here. I have my flannel shirt on, and I fit in and fuck off." And they're like, "But people's disappearing." Yeah, she's very selfish, and it never really ends. She's kind of this way the entire movie and Well, no, here she does say, okay, well, if people's disappearing, I will go back to yeah. save the movie world. But not the world that she left. Well, and actually, they'll be back shortly. Uh, because it's time for the Save the Sea dance, which yes. had been established. We just didn't talk about it. Something else for Mac that didn't jive with Brady's persona at school for some reason is she's very about the environment and picking up trash at the beach, which you would think, you know, the surfer guys would like too. Yeah. Uh, but she's organizing this dance to fundraise for uh, saving the beach. And she's there. And for whatever reason, even though it was kind of set up that maybe like Spencer had a thing for her, Spencer like hooks up with her friend Alyssa. And I'm like, who gives a fuck? Why are these characters? Why was Alyssa in this movie? Spencer, I can understand, but it's like, why? why? I don't know. But they hook up. So she's looking happily on them, but then Brady looks so fucking pissed. He's very, yeah, they're, they're watching Spencer, and he's very, I don't know if he's, like, pissed or just, he's just depressed because um, Mac is just, I, I don't know why he's she's just, happy he's about He's sad Spencer. that they're not together. Why does she care about Spencer? No, she's just happy for her friend. Yeah, I don't know. But there had been some conversations earlier that, like, they were fighting, and Layla and Tanner are like, I don't like them fighting, so... Right here, as Matt Brady's trying to figure out how he can reconnect with Mac, all of the, the movie crew busts back in, and they're like, we're here to help you guys get back together. Okay. Uh, so then we have a really fun music number where there's a band playing very... It's under the sea theme, so kind of a Back to the Future reference. Love the vibe. And Brady gets up on stage, talks to the band. He's like, okay, yeah. Your kids are going to love this. It's called more Skrillex. Or less. <laughs> <laughs> more or less. Yeah, I mean, he, he busts out. He's like, he, but he gets on the mic. He's like, I wish I was a little bit taller. <laughs> I, wish I wish I was, I was a ball. ball. <laughs> I wish Mac was my girl. I'd call her. Oh, uh, go off, Lucas. Well, I mean, part of that is just like the lyric from the song. Go off, King. Uh, but no, the Slay. song they do is Gotta Be Me. It's a big rock and roll number. And it even kind of calls back to... Slightly West Side Story, but more West Side Story overall, where there's the kind of mixer dance. Here, it's divided not by surfers and bikers or jets and sharks. It's divided by boys versus girls. So Brady's kind of leading the guy's side. Mac is leading the girl's side. They're alternating okay. singing and kind of having like a dance-off thing. Yeah, uh, dance-off. Really dance fun, dance really well choreographed. Uh, then there's like a marching band and then they get on the bleachers and the bleachers slide towards the center and they're on the bleachers like singing at each other. It's a lot of fun. I liked it a yeah, lot. No, I, 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 I like the, uh, the, the movie set one. This is probably, this is probably my second favorite dance number of the, of the movie. And it kind of ends then I think with Mac catching Brady Yes, and he says, I to mirror for the movie. you. And they're like, oh, I, I like you, Brady. Uh, so they're back together, mostly. Uh, yes. So time to get the other people back to the movie. But then Butchie disappears, and Butchie, this is like the dumbest stuff. It's yeah, like, because Butchie was he holding the necklace. Has the necklace, which is the portal key, basically. So then he disappears with the necklace, so then how can we get these people back to the movie world? And then we remember... How did they get to the movie in the first place? Well, in the first movie, they used Big Papa's surfboard. Unfortunately, Big Papa, not in this movie. He's probably dead. 
And actually, they're like, oh, it wasn't the board that was magical. It was this rose emblem on it. So they get the surfboard. Oh, but there's no waves. So they got to go get Brady's surfboard invention. You guys work on getting that rose off the board. So Brady takes Mac to his surfboard shack. And she sees all of this stuff he's been working on. And she's like, oh, why didn't you tell me? Why'd you need to keep it a secret? I don't know why you needed to keep it a secret anyways, but we needed some conflict in our sequel. So then she's like really impressed. And she says, no more secrets between us. And then they're all back together. Yeah. So then they take his special surfboard, put Big Papa's Weird thing motorized. on Weird motorized. Yeah. They slap the sticker on it. And I think it starts to glow. It's magic. It is magic. And as me and Jacob were talking about, it's like, well, actually, it wasn't it more that the surfboard was magical, but it saved them from dying because she went out into a storm and Brady tried to rescue her and they were both about to die. And that's why they went into the movie world. Yes. No, here it's just you got to surf on the magic bar. <laughs> you know, yeah, again, it's don't question the internal logic or consistency, continuity in these movies. Just have fun with the music. So they. Get them out there, and the special, I think Jacob described it earlier, it's got like a motor so it can self-propel. There's some drama over, like, Brady can't get it to start, but then he does. And it's like, okay, well then what was the concern? I, I think what that was is it, it was taking him a long time, and while he was underwater, Tanner started to flicker away. But then so he still was, fixed it in time. Yeah, so maybe he was like, oh, we got to hurry. He's just, just to create we, more tension. We already had a ticking just clock. To, just to more stress. I don't oh, know. because by this point, all of the other characters besides Layla and Tanner have disappeared, too. So yes. it's just the main characters that are left over. And then they get sent off, and then Mac and... Or before this, Mac and Brady had been talking, it's like, if they don't get back in time and the movie's erased, wouldn't that mean we've never met each other? And I'm like, what? Yeah, that that to me was very kind of dumb. So I'm not going to say I am a Teen Beach movie expert. Maybe there was some line of dialogue that said we met at like a community showing of Wet Side Story. Yeah, I, I don't remember exactly how it plays out exactly in the first movie, but Teen Beach or Wet Side Story is what or was Brady's favorite movie. But now that movie does not exist anymore. It's called Layla's Beach or well, whatever. No, Jacob, you are getting so far ahead. Yes, but, but I'm just saying that, that that's why. Well, that, that's a whole other issue it. that this has. I'm just talking about why would this, even if they didn't rescue anybody, the movie disappeared. Why would it mean they it, hadn't met each other? They, they probably met because of the movie, though, right? Well, yeah, but that's they, why they, I'm they asking like the movie. if it's actually in Teen Beach Movie 1. I, I don't remember. Yeah, I, I don't remember, remember either. And I don't know if it's, there's a whole other can of worms that gets opened yes. by the end of the movie. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a mess. A little messy. But it seems like they're rescued, or they get off to safety, they surf away. But then, Brady swims to shore, Mac is on the shore, and he runs by her. And they yeah. don't know each they other. They do not know each other, and he's, he's there to see um, his friend Trevor, or whatever it was. Devin. Or Devin. <laughs> Trevor. I don't know why he thought it was Trevor. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so then he meets up with Devin, and he's just like, yeah, bro, so fuck girls, am I right? <laughs> he's like, I don't know who that bit was. Yeah, it was like a weird slap and tickle. But then they turn, and it's like, oh, man, there's a save the beach dance. And it's like, yeah. I don't think it was at the school, so this is a completely different one. And this one Because seems... of the timeline, everything has changed, Lucas. And this is... A, it's all different. Maybe the whole Big world Papa's has changed. shack. Uh, yeah, it's at the burger joint or oh, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. It seems to be biker and surfer themed. But it can't be Wet Side Story because then they would know each other. Yes. And this is where we find out that so Mac is running it and Brady gets like a wristband to come in and he's like, oh, what's this movie? You've, oh, I've never heard of it. Layla, Queen of the Beach. Yeah. And I don't know how much Jacob wants me to divulge here that there was some conversation between Mac and Layla uh, that we weren't listening to because Jacob was talking about too much about how. Layla had a, a weird forehead, but he wasn't saying it was a big forehead. No. I'm like, well, I don't know how else her, could her forehead Because be her weird. hair was normally up in that weird, you know, old style kind of hairdo. And it, it I think her like forehead still... is largely present throughout most of this movie. I don't, it, it, it just looked weird. Jacob, like, Something you could project like the movie up on her forehead. I'm like, oh, Jacob, <laughs> That's, settle down. That never happened. So I believe. You're putting words in my mouth. I believe what had happened in this conversation is that Mac is like, hey, Layla. I know you don't want to go back to your movie world, but you can make it your own 
you know, make your own choices there. Don't feel like you have to stick to the script. And that allowed her to, Jacob said, potentially selfishly, turn the movie to all be about her. But as the movie starts to play, Layla's the main character, but we do see that all of our friends are still there. There's Tanner. His hair's just a little different styled. And it's still surfers and bikers, but it's just as like, hey, I'm the I'm the main character now, which is like, well, Layla was more interesting than Tanner anyways. True. So this leads into the final song that is That's How We Do. And it is both a big dance number in the movie that they're watching, but then also everybody in the real world watching it starts to freak out and does choreography and sing They're dancing on their cars. To... They're dancing on the rooftops. They're dancing in the sand. And honestly, since there had been so many group numbers in this movie, this was one... It was still fun, uh, but it's probably one of my less favorite of the group numbers. I think maybe they had hit too high of energy that maybe it just kind of got diminishing returns as it went along. But it was still fun. There's a part where everybody in the movie is like showcasing their like specific dance move. Like Chi Chi says, do the knuckle sandwich. And then yeah, Butch they says, had a... do the angry gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, you like that one. Yeah, they had, a, they had a bunch of funny, goofy names. And I don't know. I, some of them sounded like I'd heard before, but definitely not no angry gorilla. And then uh, Mac and Brady, they dance together. And they end up connecting again. And this time, Brady catches Mac. And it's, you know, yeah, the whole falling, falling for, for you yeah, kind I, of I, thing. I, and we did see, like, a spark, you know, from them earlier. Um, when she said she wanted to buy him a mango smoothie or something. Yeah, and it started a fire on the beach. Yeah. Yeah, that's the end of the movie. So, the rant, Well, no, kind of. Yes. Well, no. before we get to the credits song, which is probably in the credits for a reason, because it wasn't that good of a no. song. But then... To maybe Jacob's point of them changing the movie. So that already made it so that they didn't meet. But then doesn't it kind of affect some stuff? I know some people have brought up it's like Layla in the first movie was going to go to a different school because of her aunt. But then because of what happened was then the movie of Wet Side Story, she decided to stay. So if this movie didn't exist and she never met Brady up until this point... Couldn't that have rewritten the timeline where she wouldn't even have been here? It all comes down to the Back to the Future thing where you can't meet yourself, you can't talk to yourself, do any of that. You can't fuck up the timeline because it changes everything, man. You end up with, you know, Marty McFly's dad, you know, a billionaire. You end up with, you know, just wow. everything gets everything gets all out of whack. I would argue that this movie is the complete opposite of that, is that you can change the timeline. And its philosophy is that love is so strong that you will still be connected and meet the people you are but destined yeah. to. Oh, yeah. If you want to be all romantic, I didn't think no, that I'm was a Lucas This movie thing. is not saying anything no, no. was magically... Nothing no, basically changed bad. by them changing stuff. Nothing's... Well, I mean, yes, but no. What changed? I the mean, movie? They just met in a different way. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. That nothing... Movie, well, you got to think about the ramifications. You just wanted to reference this Back movie, to the Future. <laughs> yes, correct. But Wet Side Story as a movie, it never existed. This movie, like, we're just worrying about two people that it might have affected. There's thousands out there, hundreds of thousands. This could have also been their favorite movie, but now it's just gone. It never existed in the time frame of Hollywood Where's cinema. Where's Big Papa? Exactly. Maybe his shack doesn't exist. Maybe Big Mama's shack never existed. It, it Maybe it got run down because... I think, I think Big Mama's shack is in the, the Layla movie. Because, you know... I mean, they're I, dancing I, around it at least. Yeah. Honestly, who knows? But yeah, in the credits, they just have a whole extra song called yeah. Starting Over. And it, and, and it's a mixture between the, the movie world and the the real world, I guess. I think it was Yeah, me and Jacob song. were actually in the movie at this point. We were. <laughs> Lucas and I were on screen. And we were actually watching this the whole time. Uh, I don't think Disney Plus has a sing-along version, but they oh, should. Oh, we the ears are bouncing. We were just dancing, <laughs> gyrating, <laughs> and singing along. Oh, I love the gyrating girl in this movie, the one that wears like the... Well, She's a go-go skirt. dancer. Yeah, she's fun. I like her. Which is like a, a 60s thing that yeah. would show up in these kind of teen beach movies. Big fan. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> you are too. I get it. As I've probably made clear throughout this discussion, despite its massive tsunami-sized plot holes, I still like teen beach movie. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, teen beach 2 more two, than yeah. teen beach movie. I just, you know, it's easier to say, quicker to get out of the mouth. Teen Beach 2. I, yeah, I think the music was more fun. I think the the first movie was maybe more trying to stick to its 
source material of being like this is more of like music of the era that would be in something like this movie where this was had more modern sounding music which i like more but they still had you know like the chi chi sea cat song that was more doo-wop and i just felt like that was a better version of what i maybe would have wanted from the music in the first movie yeah and then it was enough fun the real world shenanigans with the fake characters for me to overlook some of like the very contrived and forced interpersonal conflicts between the brady and mac are also i would say none of like the couples really and i guess technically maybe layla and tanner don't really hook up in the end but like brady and mac i don't feel like they have great chemistry layla and tanner i don't feel like they have great chemistry I know there's a lot of fans that are pointing to Layla and Mac being the best couple. And honestly, that is probably fair. But even in 2015, Disney is not pulling that. I think we got to wait till possibly the Under Wraps remake for there to be a a same sex couple. That's love that. And they're both mummies. Oh, 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 oh. (laughs) mummies. Uh, But I've said plenty. What do you have for final thoughts? Um. Oh, it's just something kind of fun. I, I had read that this is the first sequel, I guess, since um. Oh my God! You don't say. Since Camp Rock Two, this is the first sequel. Where in, could in you have found years. that? that right is, on, you uh, better the, hit IMDb trivia and say this is very interesting. This, I, I, I'm intrigued because I, I mean, what it does tell you is it tells you that Disney was trying to find a bunch of more original ideas, I guess, rather because I mean, we had we had a handful of sequels in there for for a while. Well. I mean, Cheater I'm, Girls, you know, you had the high we've school had a lot musical. Of yeah, a lot of sequels. We've had sequels. We've had sequels. Yeah. We've had Seriously. Z- threes. So for five years, you're not having a single installment, uh, a single sequel or, you know, trilogy thing. I mean, I, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. They took a five-year Was Camp Rock 2 2010? Yeah. I mean, that's what it says. Hmm. They obviously have produced fewer movies. But I, again, I'm borrowing the thesis or a lot of the argument from that one disney channel youtube video that i saw but this is them trying to make those dual they're addressing multiple markets so this is a movie dvd sales but then also soundtrack sales and trying to create you know their own stars and stuff like that so this is there's a reason why we don't get sequels to any movies that aren't musicals and this is really since camp rock the only musical they really had were let it shine which doesn't really set it itself up for a sequel and yeah. Teen Beach movie, which literally was like one of the only DCOMs that had a sequel tease at the end. And I believe it's the one after Teen Beach 2 is Descendants, which is really uh, Disney Channel probably hitting on what they've been trying to accomplish since High School Musical the hardest. And we'll have to wait and see how we feel come that. For now... I don't really know if there's anything. I don't remember what we did for Never Remember previously for I Teen don't. Beach Movie 1. But I feel like there's not really any different. We don't. I will say. I guess what I would say, maybe a lot of the rage Terrace felt was from this Teen Beach, the original movie, the movie. And that's maybe why they decided to take the towers down. But now that that movie does now not you're just exist, stealing my we're, bits. <laughs> oh, were you we actually going to do? do well, that? I always talk about oh. like these movies representing what you know Al Qaeda could hate about America. <laughs> they they hated what side story, but now that movie doesn't exist, so oh, they never okay. never had the hatred for it. That's so, what you're trying to yes, say. Yes. Okay. They're like we respected that you didn't say it was a movie, so we we won't do it. Yeah. I will say uh, I kind of appreciated that there wasn't like. I didn't like the mad scientist subplot well, yeah, of the, the first no, movie. That was kind of goofy. But it, that it is was... definitely something that would be in those <sighs> I, I did beach movies think of the that 60s. Maybe they would have made an appearance in this one. I mean they could have. They were on the Google cast list, but they Oh. I mean that's all like fucking AI generated at this point. They're they're just making shit up all oh. the time. So they were they were According they to were, Google They were listed to be in this movie, you're saying. Google surfaced. Gotcha, them. gotcha, gotcha. But they also credited the Layla actress <laughs> as her character was Layla, comma, Layla. <laughs> so, uh, Jacob's making all the noises here of coughing, drinking, and computer noises. This is tough ending. Uh, it's Jacob's fault for derailing me. You Sorry can write us at a whole new pod at gmail.com. 
And I think we've actually had a fair number looking at our numbers of new listeners. So I think I meant to say previously, but if you're a new listener, write in, let us know what you like about the show. If you especially have binged a lot of episodes recently and you're able to remember parts of them better than Jacob and I, tell us some of your favorite bits or episodes. Probably still won't amount to anything, but at least because we're coming up on episode 100 soon and we don't have anything planned. But a lot of times, you know, people maybe do Do a best of for their podcast around that point. Fun 100 episode. We'll also leave the door open. Zendaya, if you're listening. Yeah. Episode 100 special. Uh, I I just made a book about you at work. I was looking at your face for like 15 minutes, so. We won't add any extra context to (laughs) what Jacob does or anything. He was just making a book at work. So again, that's a whole new pod at gmail.com. Also find us on various podcast platforms, rate us, review us on those. And we have had some recent reviews on oh. Apple. So we've wow. now up to, I think, 11 total reviews. Cool. And I think we've only had one four star and we had a written review recently. Uh, title of this was Perfect for Disney Fans, five stars from Smiley22. And it is... Then the emoji with one eye open, one eye closed, and the tongue sticking out. Oh. And then uh, the person with their arm kind of like they're holding an invisible platter to be like, whatever. I don't know what that means. <laughs> you know, I got to give the full details. That's all the review is? No, that's just oh. their username. Oh. And they okay. wrote, I've never been a podcast person. I always dreaded the idea of listening to someone talk about something for an hour. You're telling me when I edit this podcast. <laughs> The other day I was bored and decided to try a podcast out and stumbled across this one. I now have been listening to it nonstop since yesterday afternoon. The commentary is extremely funny if you have seen the film before. It's entertaining, especially if you're a big Disney fan. Make a High School Musical 3 one. I might have just missed it, but I simply can't find it. Mm. You are correct. We have not done a High School Musical 3 episode. And that is because we are very beholden to our premise of we are doing every DCOM in chronological order. But High School Musical 3 will probably be one of the first movies we'll end up doing once we've caught up and done yeah. all like of the Like a bonus decons. episode, like a, like a one-off. Well, we've already kind of discussed the, the post yeah. plans for this. Movies you watch? know, we sometimes floated that will just become a, a Good Burger episode, <laughs> or a Good Burger <laughs> show where we talk about gir- good, I can't even say it. <laughs> it can't be a Good Burger show because I can't even say the title right. Uh, welcome to Good we Burger. We talk about it every burger, single episode, burger. once a month or something. But yes, thank you for the review. Thanks for liking the show. And again, share it to other people out there, as well as finding this on YouTube, youtube.com slash a whole new pod. If you comment there, I'm very likely to respond to you unless I don't like your comment. Shout out to Brazil. Yes. And we seem to, (laughs) according to uh, rankings we found online, maybe you've had a lot of Brazilian listeners. So that could be something interesting if you want to write us in or comment. Tell us where what, you're from. What is the Brazilian perspective on Disney Channel? Because generally, I don't think Disney Channel was like super widespread uh, in the world. So I don't know if there's connections to DCOMs or if it's maybe more of just like a cultural interest of hearing about them. But yeah, let us know and write into those various places. Twitter, you can follow Dustin on I shouldn't say Dustin. Follow us. Follow our <laughs> podcast account on Twitter, run by our friend Dustin, AWN Pod. I, I, I don't know. Twitter's made some updates recently where it's not working correctly. They're making changes that are making me want to use it less, which is maybe a positive thing that I just spend less time on Twitter. But yeah, nothing really to add there. And. Yeah, this was a fun episode. Yeah, that was good. I came into this thinking I had an outro. No, no, a whole new pop for you today. Yes, I wanted to say uh, we have some sodas lined up for a whole new pop, but I am a nice Catholic boy, and I'm sure you guys have all missed the drinking on the mics, but I give (laughs) up pop always for Lent, and we are in the Lenten season currently. So around Easter time, we will get the well-timed peeps pepsi oh golly so wow got that lined up i also bought myself some strawberry cream dr pepper hell yeah but i don't know jacob already he broke the i was a little i was a little selfish i apologize and drank it off mic 
The horror. I don't remember what it tastes like, so just creamy. <laughs> so maybe, I mean, I bought two bottles of that, and the cashier is like, oh, is this good? I'm like, nope, but it was on sale, so you convinced me to buy two bottles. It was on sale already? I don't know. Oh. And she's like, well, you can always give it to a friend if you don't like it. And I'm like, ha I don't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. So, yes, I for all of the, you know, we have some new, a whole new pod fans, but I'm sure... Most of our fans are really diehard, a whole new pop yeah, fans. They and that's love what it. you've been missing you on miss this that, show. That little bit of ASMR we do every once in a while for you. So with that, be safe, be good. Be kind, rewind. And be ready for our next episode when we potentially enter into the serious and modern error. Error. Fuck. End of the episode. That's an error. <laughs>